attend like this formal. I'd like to just start the meeting. Thank you, everyone, for um, attending the August meeting of the Wrong Street Planning Board. Uh, in attendance, we have our consultant, John Krebs, uh, Mike Rollo, John Hensman, Kevin Haynes, uh, Sidney McLaughlin, uh, Patrick Kelly, and Carolyn Kendall is our alternate. Um, just as a uh, outline of our procedures for tonight, since we do have a <clears throat> pretty heavy agenda, um, for each application, we're going to follow the same procedure. Uh, I'll seek a motion to accept the application as complete. Um, we'll ask for a brief update from the applicant. Uh, after that, the board will discuss and ask any questions uh, on the application. After that, we'll um, hold a public hearing, uh, at which point the public has a chance to uh, ask questions or add comments, um, and then we'll close the public hearing and uh, vote or something like that. All right, so first on our agenda is um, we have Paul Terrian, 27 Silver Street. Yeah. 
State Road also. So. Yep. We've applied for our, our driveway permit. The one thing that they want us to do is show them a, um, a section of how the grading goes off of their road onto our driveway. You've already made that. Yep. Right? Absolutely. Yep. Supplying power to the back as well. That will just be simply drawn from the pole to the to the masthead or whatever. There'll be no additional poles required for no. that length. No. It's not underground. And as well, not necessarily. I wouldn't mind putting it underground. Across. Yeah, I think the idea is that it would come into where we can get it underground and then take it down along the driveway to the to the house. But that's not what you're proposing here today. It's <coughs> expensive. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we've shown anything on there on how the power should get there, but... Well, it doesn't require a pole for that state. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Requirement of subdivision, okay. Yeah, I, I brought it up in my review. That was my first Okay. Okay. I, I mean... There, yeah, I think we did on the uh, subdivision plan. There was an additional note that we, that we talked a, about. Yeah, right there. Lot, the lot number one benefits from an easement and utility easement over the lot two. The maintenance the existing utility wires on the driveway. Uh, yeah, all utilities set, uh, servicing lot two shall be located underground. Yeah. Which is, yeah. I don't know if you have, I don't have yeah, that I was the first time. Okay, it's, so it's lot 14, it's a new note. Oh, okay. Jeff uh, okay. responded to my, he, he got my comments. On the 10th. Yeah. Okay, but you got it on the 8th or 10th, and we yeah. came so back. That's, yeah, that was adjusted. Sorry, how many may not have that? Right. Yeah. In your package, I don't think you have the, the updated plan uh, based on the comments that came back. Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So there's a number of other questions that Mr. Krebs have raised. Yeah, yeah. So we do. Are taking care of them? Yeah, I can go. I can go through them if the board would like the items that we did. We, we've changed the um, uh, the discussion on the indication about what the bounds need to be uh, in the front and where we have uh, indicated it on the plan. Um, we've provided a letter to the town uh, indicating that the PLS, the, the land surveyor that prepared the plan is aware of the presentation and aware of the project that I'm here tonight. Um, and that the, uh, we changed the note uh, as indicated in the review comment number one. Uh, all utility servicing lot two shall be located underground. So there were six comments and we've addressed those six on the plan. Well, I hate to do this here, but I did miss something, Jeff. And I, I don't know. I really think we need to have pins on that on that on that easement, and even iron yeah. pins. Are, are those? Is that? I can't tell if those are shown yeah. in the plan or not. Yeah, no, those will, those will be pins to be set okay. on that. Okay. Yep. yep. Not that you care, but some would make care. Yep. Sometime. Down the road. Mm -hmm. As long as that, as long as those are pins, that's fine. Yeah. Is it actually in the asphalt? You mean? No, no, no. Right here. Well, that I, that that, yeah. that was one of my one of my comments. I said you can't really put a bound here. Right. So what I suggested doing was putting it. Um, I don't know where you said it, Jeff. Because uh, this is in the middle of the pavement. Yeah. Yeah. So where are you setting the bound? An idea would be set there. We just drive it down below. Oh, below below, below the asphalt. Yeah. I don't care if you. I just don't. I mean. I, the I, these are the two corners I'm talking about, though that one and that one, which are yep. which are which are monumental to easement. So this, I, I'm, I don't know about that. One. I mean, I don't know if you want. Uh, you're a, well, you're yeah. a surveyor, but I would defer to your office because I'm afraid if you put it, if that's going to leave that driveway. Yeah. I, first of all, I don't want you to pound something yeah. to the asphalt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'm afraid if you put one here, it's going to be confusing. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Um, well, I mean, we have. I mean, there's the. It's. It's in the plan and it's in the deed about where the properties are, and the deed, and the plan will be recorded. So, as we're, you know, is, an offset, goes, is, is an offset monument stupid? Like in twenty feet away, is it confusing? I think it would yeah. be. I think an offset monument would be confusing okay. in that situation. Then I'll defer to you. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't want to cause any yeah. problems. So, yeah. I think if we pin that, that 
uh, whatever else you've yeah, got. Yeah, we've got the, that's, in the back. This yeah. is the only one that's taking this. I think it's, I don't think it's fair. Those two are through a driveway. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. going to introduce those. Yeah. 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 Okay. That, that's, yeah. Or it's that's fine. Up. Okay. Anything else from the board? Mr. Kinsman is defensive over here? No, just okay. uh Okay, so at this point, um, I think it's safe to open our public hearing uh, and accept comments from the public. Don't be shy. Okay, oh. Did, uh, if you uh, could Mark, just state your name and your address, please, sir. Yeah, uh, uh, Mark Kircher, uh, 204 Summersworth Road, Rollins. Uh, did a butter notices go out on, uh, on this project? Yes, they must have, right? But it's yeah, one. absolutely. And it was noticed in the paper. Nothing, nothing went out to the cemetery? Um, the cemetery is the town, so yes, it, it would have just gone to the town. It would have been nice to get notified. You know? <laughs> okay. Can you tell me your address again? 204 Sons Road. Okay. Six, and I found this with I think all three applications. The statute requires that anybody that stamps these plans be notified of the meeting. So generally, they're if you look at the abutters list, they would be you'd see all the abutters, and you'd see the, the, the licensed um, professionals that stamp these plans on that list. Jeff didn't do that, but he did provide a letter saying that I mean he shares a, 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 an office with Chris Mendy, so he he provided a letter to the board saying that he was aware of this meeting. I think, you know, from now on, we need to make sure, and I, I, I don't know why, how that is in the okay. cracks, but they need to be done. Well, I, I, no. Notice, their notification list went back to them once already, oh. so if, if I missed that one, um, I caught a couple that <coughs> Yeah. So. It's, it's just that anybody that stamps these plans, and the, that, that word is sort of, generally they don't, they don't stamp them, so you got to yeah. look at who's, who, 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 who uh, Right. The surveyors and the wetland scientists. So it's tough because, like, really, the onus of that. I mean, we check it, but the onus. Yeah, it's is not. And, and I and I and I don't. You shouldn't do it because if you make a mistake, then people are going to be pointing at you. So it's, it's their mistake. Jeff acknowledged it, and he he, yeah. he remedied it. So, but just going forward, and we you know anybody that certifies these plants should be notified or has to be notified. So, but that's been remedied. So I'm. I'm yeah, I guess, I guess we take it for granted that we're all in the same office and you know, we're working together. Doesn't always happen. You, but you're right. Yeah. But that doesn't always happen everywhere. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think we're good with public comments. Um, so I would open up. Uh, I'll move that we find the application. Thank you. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none. Um, so it's supposed to be the first thing we did. Um, that's okay. Additional discussion. I mean, the only thing, if you're going to approve this, and I, I think it's ready to be approved, but the only condition that I have is that the uh, licensed land surveyor needs to give you a certificate of monumentation. What? Do you have that? We don't, but okay. we typically yeah. we don't do that until the until the set and right. it right. goes in before they pull a building permit. Yeah. Well. Well, is that, is that well, process? I, I mean, I, I want it. I, I want it before the plan is recorded. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. That way we know yep. it's done. Yep. It's easier to follow, you know. So I but that's the only condition. Yeah. Entertain a motion. Uh, From conditional approval and then uh, uh, proof of monumentation. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none. Um, the application is approved. Um, and once you have that certificate, I'll we'll make arrangements to to sign it. Okay. Well, here's the on getting the certificate of my application. And so they won't you won't sign the mylar until the 
bounds are in, or is that? You're going to you're going to set the bounds. Yeah. Okay. Chris is going to give. Yeah. It's going to provide. You're going to he'll, he'll write a quick yep. certificate saying he set them. Yep. You're going to give that to Miles with okay. Miles and he'll sign. All right. Perfect. That is. Okay. What, yep. You have his email address and something. I do. Yeah. Just contact him. It could be tomorrow okay. or the next day. All right. So. Yep. I'm, I'm flexible. And then, do we want to talk about the recording? Yes. Yeah, so, so the um the, the tax collectors agreed to, to start recording again. So we're going to work out a process tonight after this with all of them. So. so you'll turn over the mylar to the town yeah. and pay to the fee. Caroline, I would assume Caroline. Someone here. At this point, it'd probably be easier to do with Caroline. And, and, and she'll recover. Okay. And then okay. along with the, we don't know what the fee is, yeah. but yeah. There, there's going to be an administrative fee to just to hand deliver it, plus the recording. So the yeah. the, the, the LHIP fee. All right. Okay. Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk with you. Unless you want to stick around to the end of the meeting, we'll figure out how we're doing it.
from their routes uh, head up to the main maintenance facility, uh, probably go through the wash, and then come back down the road and be parked in this building overnight for, for whatever period of time. And then they'll leave after the driver arrives, the parks in one of the parking spaces that we've allocated, they'll depart and head out on their route uh, the next day, business day. Um, there will be no public sewer or water to this building. It is strictly a storage facility. Um, one thing I would point out is we are accommodating floor drains inside the building. The floor drains are necessary to pick up when buses arrive back from being washed or if it's a real messy day in late March, early April, and we've got slush on the uh, buses. It's a place for the drippings to be uh, accumulated and uh, we are running to a holding tank, on-site holding tank. We have a holding tank registration approval from New Hampshire DES, which I believe I sent to you, but if you don't have it, I can talk to you this evening. So that will accommodate any kind of runoff from the buses inside the building. Other than that, we'll run underground electricity off the utility pole that's in front of the site. Um, in order to accommodate this facility, there's a large amount of wetlands on this site. I can draw your attention back to the cover sheet. Uh, I tried to depict on there the wetland limits uh, on the subject parcel. Um, check to your right. So the wetland limits right now are right through here on this particular site. The remainder of the property goes this way, another 215 feet and uh, another 170 feet, so quite a stretch down that road. If you look at the cover sheet, the wetland area actually extends even over to the adjacent parcel, also owned by Rollinsford Realty Trust. So there's a large wetland area in there, and what we're doing is we're encroaching into your 50-foot buffer for pavement, about uh, 562 square feet of pavement, <coughs> and 561 square feet of slope. Uh, in other words, earth moving within the 25-foot buffer. We've been to the Conservation Commission about a month ago. And I believe we received a favorable recommendation, although I haven't seen anything right there. I have it, yeah. yeah. So, am I correct? It seemed to be well received. And yeah. It did have one recommendation. Yes. Just about the plant and yes. um, yeah, uh, uh, encourage them to plant evergreens, green. Uh, their plan currently includes uh, native conifer front and roadside, front roadside of the building. So yeah, we can okay. discuss. So the other action we take is to act on the conditional use approval as well. Um, we have a landscaping plan that essentially has those four uh, trees along this buffer right here. That's to kind of hide the building more than anything else as you come in Church Street. And then we have four uh, birches, which I'll get to later, uh, planted along the side of the road on our property, but along the side of the road. Um, so that's the extent of our landscaping. Um, we have building lighting uh, similar to what we have at the other facility. It'll be LED uh, shielded uh, lighting along the building to light up the individual doorways. But we are going to expand that lighting so that we have a fixture right here at this parking area for security for the uh, drivers. Um, beyond that, we are essentially anything extraordinary here that I can touch upon. Maybe what I should mention is that we have received comments from both civil consultants and from Mr. Krebs. And uh, suffice it to say, I don't know if you want me to go through these in detail, but we uh, don't have any objections. We just have one question. There was a mistake. Okay. Item number one. 
Uh, yeah, the last couple of sentences. I, I, Caroline mentioned something to me on the phone the other day, and I didn't realize it, but it, 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 yes, it's a mistake. That's not right. So my, my comment number one should say the lot, 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 line, lot line eliminated by, by lot version granted by the planning board, period. Yeah. The rest of that, I don't know where it came from, but it's not your maintenance question. And we're more than happy to comply with that comment, <laughs> I, understanding what its intent is. Uh, but if you want to put some lights in there, <laughs> <right. laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> we're good. Yeah. Uh, we will improve the sheet numbering. Um, that was a, an oversight on my part. Um, I had a question concerning comment number three, and I think now that I've mulled it over in my mind, as it takes some time for me to understand the comment, um, I think we can simply address this by, um, if you look on sheet three, I have extended the Cape Cod berm, as it's called CCB, I've extended it all the way out to the existing edge of pavement, which really is not necessary. Uh, and I, what I would offer to do here, uh, I've done it on all the driveways, is I will just truncate that Cape Cod berm at the right of way line, and then there's no need to ask for any waiver. You don't want to put granite in, do you? No, I don't want to put granite in, and I have photos. There is no granite in anywhere in the industrial park at any of the entrances. So what I was proposed to do in this case is to treat it like we treated the other vehicle storage building. We have Cape Cod Berm on the sides of the driveways of that building, but it does not extend all the way out to the edge of the street further. So that solves that. We don't have to ask for a waiver. Yep. Um, Unless you want to talk to if the road agent is fine with it, I've got no problem. Well, no, the more yeah, I thought about it, I understand what your comment is, is that if the town plows, it, it's going to knock it out. And, and, and they don't want the maintenance of it. No, so I, I wouldn't say <coughs> Perfectly reasonable. Okay. That's, um, that's a good solution. Stamps on the plans, we typically just kind of hold off on those until we've gone through the whole thing rather than stamping them multiple yeah. times. I've already touched upon the fact that we were more than happy to light that parking area for the employees. Uh, the birch trees, uh, I will make a note on there that they're intended to be measured at, as two and a half inch caliper, uh, 12 inches above uh, the finished grade. Uh, that's the intent. That's my understanding, my understanding from my landscape friend. That's the standard approach. Um, the topic you just touched upon in the previous application regarding notification of um, licensed professionals. Uh, we did, in fact, drop off revised labels and list about two days after we made this initial application back in late June. So I think we've got covered. Yeah. Okay. So Mark and uh, I guess there's an option. Yeah, Mark, Paul, uh, Paul, 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 myself, uh, everybody got it. Okay. Notice. Okay. Yeah. Um, you mentioned it had no issue with the conditional use permit. We can touch on that. And uh, again, uh, we agree that the notice of merger probably should be acted on. Uh, part of the site plan application. Um, skipping over very quickly, and I know your time is of the essence here, civil consultants has uh, comments, uh, none of which we have a problem with. Um, they are all good comments. Uh, we do need to fine tune some numbers in our grange analysis, but I do not believe in my professional opinion it will change anything. Um, just some corrections. Uh, and again, as I said before, none of their comments, they're mostly uh, tidying up the plans and making them a, a little more consistent. For example, on our uh, handicap parking space stall detail, uh, if the dimensions do not ma match the town standards, even though we laid them out to match the town standards, so little things like that. Uh, so that, in essence, uh, I, I, again, I don't have any problem with responding to all of their comments. Uh, I would humbly request that if you are comfortable with seeing uh, act on the lot line merger or condition use permit, and if you feel comfortable to uh, give a conditional final approval subject to uh, both of these professionals signing off that we could respond to their comments, uh, that might save you another chance to sit down and enjoy a summer evening with me. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. Um, open it up to uh, comments, questions from the board. Could you 
uh, comment on the stormwater note? What, what is, just let us know what, what, that, what that's about. Is that a concern that um, because it's saying that you use a different, um, you use grass cover when forest tree cover should be used, does that affect the stormwater coming off this property? This is for civil consultants. Right. Yes, that was the stormwater review and uh, Essentially, there appears to be a little bit of confusion as to whether this existing tree line was used or the proposed um, total slope was used. And it's a matter of a few hundred square feet difference. Uh, we will check those numbers, but I, again, in my professional opinion, I don't believe it will render any type of difference in the pre and post development uh, analysis. We will perform all those changes and make sure that Jay Stevens is comfortable with it. But uh, I don't, I'm not concerned about it. All right, thank you. Any other questions, comments? So at this point, why don't we uh, open the public hearing uh, to accept comments from the public. Any questions? Sally Leopold, 426 Washington Street. Is the lighting on the building, I can't see you, okay. directed only at the building and it's not going to overflow onto the road Correct. Or, or anything like that? Correct. We, we have to do a photo, what they call a photometric analysis. And so we have an area of coverage for the light, but the idea is that it be directed downward, and it only extends out from the building about 20 feet. Okay. So it lights the area right around the doorways, and the new light fixture that we will propose will be around the parking area, those four parking spaces, and that, that will be the same type of uh, lighting, downward directed lighting, LED lighting, energy efficient lighting. It's <coughs> Dana, what's, what's the sheet number in the photometric sheet number four? <coughs> the goal for me when I made, up, made that comment was that I, I want to make sure there's not zero light, there's not zero foot candles right, between the parking area and the, and the building. So it may require two spaces, or two, I'm sorry, two, uh, two light poles. I just don't think it's fair to ask you know, an employee to walk at 9 o'clock at night on a winter's night you know, with no light between the parking area and the building. So that's a fair so one 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 light might do it. We will we will put in the appropriate light yeah. fixture. Uh, we don't want it to be any higher than it has to be. No. And if it needs to be three, we will put it in two, but it will conform to the same uh, photometric design standards. And my question was geared towards this intersection where the railroad you know, tracks is living in that neighborhood. I just want to make sure that drivers are coming back and forth, and it's not going to affect the roadway. No, no, it doesn't 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 need the property line. Yeah. And. So your plan is only to have buses in and out of here a couple of times a day, so it shouldn't um, affect traffic before that. It's not going to change. Excuse me. It's not going to affect the number of buses that go in and out at all. Basically, we have parking for 23 buses. I mean parking for 28. So this will get me three more and get a little closer. We don't let, uh, we don't have snow on our buses, you know, like some of the bus companies and trucks will go down the highway and snow will blow off. We don't do that. So I the inside. And they'll go down over the railroad tracks instead of down under the bridge, is that correct? Or uh, whichever way, way is feasible? Yeah, go for it. But normally now, most of them go over the railroad tracks because they go to Dover. Okay. I'm sorry, sir. Can you repeat your name? Oh, I'm sorry, Mike Dupont with uh, CUJ Bus Lines. Is it Dupont or Love Point? Love Point. Okay. I was just concerned about the intersection because that's a yeah. point of contention sometimes in the neighborhood. Thank you. Any other comments, questions?
anything else from the board? Any other concerns? Do you want to talk about the Conservation Commission letter? Because oh, Dana sort of brought it up. Because if you read my comment number three, uh, number seven. <coughs> the yeah, I mean, they're not a solid tall tree, but if you look at where they planted them on the, um, on the lot, they're, they're, I don't know what, 30 feet from the edge of pavement, quite yes. a ways. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't really, roadside I don't really care uh, about the fact that they're not salt on As long as they understand that if they die, they have to replace them. And they don't want to have to replace trees every other year. But I, Dane, I, I haven't been out there, but I know that you've used birches with success before. So it, it's just a comment. You know, I don't, if you're going to anybody has any strong feelings about using a different species of tree, that'd be great. But if they, as long as they... Maintain them. That's what we have out there now. I don't. I can't tell you the exact birch trees. Okay. So she's she's saying thing. that you propose to plant a specific native conifer. Oh, that's not a birch. That's those four down along the railroad tracks. Okay. So so their comments really address that landscaping, the the evergreen screen, and. No. You're proposing what? And what is the universe? Yeah. 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 yeah.
he will he will deal with. So what we want is a letter from Jay Stevens saying, I have no issue. If he has one issue that's a sticking point, then they would have to come back here. So if Dana said he, he can work it out with Jay, if, if, if he's confident he can work it out, that's what we want. Are you curious? Can we get a summary of the issues that you are going to address? I'd be happy to. Uh, I'll go through them quickly. Uh, she won the cover sheet. Claim needs to be dated. Note 11 should reference uh, road standards uh, um, for the town of Longsford. And uh, the parking calculations note suggests the planning board determination. Uh, that might be something we want to discuss, but we propose three parking spaces plus a handicap parking space because we have three buses, three drivers. I, I made the calculation, but yeah. it seemed logical. It seemed, so. it, it, there wasn't yeah. anything else that covered this right. particular use of the regulations. Yeah. On the existing conditions plan, uh, the legend needs to be uh, uh, embellished to include the wetland line. Uh, we probably should use a different line type for the high intensity soil line, no, no problem. Just a matter of a CAD operation there. Uh, we need to complete the sheet number. It says sheet uh, two of blank, I believe. Uh, and I also need to make note of the high intensity soils mapping, which was done by uh, Joe Noel, who's a certified soil scientist. Um, there's some scale issues on the graphic scale on sheet three. Uh, they would like us to add directional arrows to the pavement. I think that's a great idea. Uh, again, the sheet number. Proposed clearing line, limit line is difficult to differentiate from other lines, so again, we'll make a, an adjustment in the CAD presentation. There's a typo on the pavement radius. It's not 52 feet, it's actually 5 feet. Um, and uh, they ask the question, will a stabilized construction entrance be used at both driveway entrances? Do you know what a stabilized construction entrance is? It's basically a 50 or 75 foot approach of large stone so that the construction vehicles going in and out of the site during construction, prior to paving, don't track mud and debris out onto the public roads. We're going to put them in both entrances. Yes, that's fine. Uh, site lighting, again, the scale adjustment, not a minor, a minor thing. Um, uh, the photometrics is misspelled. <laughs> that's an inferior thing. Um, the sheet numbers are incomplete. And, uh, the designer, I had already talked to Jay about this, the designer indicated that a light was being added to the car parking area for safety. So we're going to do that. Uh, parking stall detail, I think I mentioned during my presentation, we, we laid it out correctly, but we didn't put the correct numbers on our detail. We have a striking detail, so it's a mismatch there. They have no comments on the rest of the plans. Uh, they suggest that the plans be stamped, which they will be. And uh, the stormwater review, review we touched upon. So I think, you know, I don't object to any of these. So we can accommodate all those changes. And that, was, that was helpful. Thank you. If, you, are you, if you're going to reprint these to give them to the board, are you going to eliminate that lot line? What are we going to do about that? We're going to put a note on it as you requested the lot line. But now the merge is granted. Should we just get rid of it? Well, your notes, I thought it was a good note because you said lot line eliminated by merger. Okay. Lot cool. merger granted by the wrong school cool. angle. That covers it. That's right.
We don't record today. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is third okay. Basically, so it yeah, makes it easier. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to try to record this thing. No, <laughs> they, don't, they don't like us to record so plenty of the third street. Um, okay. Right. But there is the law line. The merger. The application gets filed. I think the I think the form gets filed. Yes. The form itself gets filed. So yeah, we do need to, that. You, you have it, Miles. Um, that needs to be filled out by. That needs to be signed by both the applicant and by the board. <coughs> you have my copy. Oh, sorry. Well, you have it. Um, but that form needs to be filled out. You have it, sir. Yes. We will have Rollins for Realty and Trust to sign that and get that back to you. Well, let's talk about it. Who is Rollins for Because I know, I know you, Mike, you signed the plans. Who is or the application? Who, who, who's going to sign this? From Jim. Yeah, Mr. Jolly. So I, I think uh, you've got this all filled out. You want to, um, how do you want to handle this? You want to have them complete this form? But, oh, but this isn't a, it's a complete form, it just needs signatures. Does it need to be Do you have a clean, really? do you have a clean copy of this? Do you have a um, clean copy I of mean, it? yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, uh, mine's a little triangulated. I don't have a clean copy. Well, do you have a clean copy? I can, I can give, give you a clean copy out of this package that I see. Yeah, let's do that. Just tear it out neatly. Well, it was like we're not going to do it tonight anyway. I was going to say, I was going to say, you don't sign it until Mr. Albert signs it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the problem. Too. Okay. So I will get Mr. Jobber to sign it, and I will bring it in for the board signature. Okay. And I will make sure that you know everybody's kept in the loop that it's been sent in and brought in, and, and we'll take it from there. And then, and then we will filing fee. That I guess we will, we will report this. So, report so we will report this. Yes, you will report that. So we will charge you. Absolutely. <laughs> and we don't know how much we're going to charge you. <laughs> oh, no, you're welcome. Can't, we can't go ahead with this project if you're going to charge us for that. <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be a small. That's all we know. That's all we know. So what if she does two at once? Like, I don't know. Don't What's your policy? Policy? I would double. I would charge her double that. Uh, I don't know. We need to. We, I guess we need to figure that out. You tell us what the fee is, and we'll make sure. Okay. Check this we'll out. figure it out sometime. But I will make sure Mr. Dalbert signs it first. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to need a little break.
Maybe not so great. Let's let's yeah, let's, let's hold it. Let's talk about it. So anyways, this block that we're talking about was created in 2013 with four lot subdivision, three lots that were on Greenview Drive, which is to the rear of the property. And then this <coughs> block that we're looking at here, uh, that, that's under the reduced Then in 2014, we submitted an application for a site review that allowed this, the construction of the building that's there right now. So in 2014, there was a site review application submitted, and in 2015, it was approved by this board. Um, I'm not sure how many members were on board at that time. I don't think it was a pretty much a clean slate at this point. So as part of that application, we, we asked for a waiver form from the uh, landscaping requirements and a waiver from the HIS map because uh, we had done the HIS map during the subdivision, and it really didn't lend any advantage to what we were doing with the site plan review. As part of that site plan review, we showed a septic system that was installed since that was approved, and uh, there was a driveway that was installed since that was approved, and some other various things as part of that site review application. This little pad here that has a Quonset hut on it, which is a storage facility, that was shown on the plan as to be uh, kept in place. Okay, so. I went through my files. You don't have a copy of that approved site plan. Do you? Well, what I have here is, and I don't, I asked Carolyn about that, the file, if she could look at it, but she said it was complicated to find. So I just wanted to recap this at this point, just to wonder if we should even be here or if we're just looking for a change of use versus a site plan. So I have a, an email here from. So this email is from my office manager, Cheryl, who was here before to present this plan. I could not make that, uh, that, that plan with me. So it said, and then Pat Macklin was the chair at the time. It said, good morning, Pat. We are ready to submit the final plan to the town following the planning board approval. Could you tell me the items that are to be delivered, how many copies, large and small, digital, how to deliver them today? So the Pat writes back and says, just use the guidelines in the site plan recently submitted and added the digital copy would be would be good. So then she wrote back Cheryl wrote back this is Cheryl wrote January twentieth, twenty fifteen. Okay. Okay? Yep. As previously submitted, six <coughs> full size copies, twenty four by thirty six and four small eleven by seventeen sets of the site plans, existing conditions and proposed site plan will be delivered to the town today. I've also attached PDFs for these two sheets. Additionally I've attached uh, I have delivered a copy of the state approval letter and the stamp plans for your files. And as part of that, I also have Discuss. 
I can tell you that we've addressed, or I, have, I can tell you how I will, will address your comments, John, uh, if we want to move ahead with the site review application. But I just want to make sure we're on the same page of what we should be reviewing. I mean, I was here in 2015 or 2014. I think Kevin was. I don't really remember. I, I actually just found the minutes. Oh, you did? Yeah, I was here. <clears throat> What's that? I was here for that. Okay, time. yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I guess I remember this coming in, but it was sort of a low key, you know, a, a, a constri like, a, like Kevin said, you know, a small building to, to do uh, maintenance on construction vehicles. It's my opinion, and I, 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 you know, it started with, it really started with your, you mm -hmm. saying that you needed a site plan, I think, but uh, because of the change use. This, this sort of the measure of, a, of what kicks off a, 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 a requirement for a site plan review usually is, is the increase in intensity of a site. So if this was approved for a retail facility and they were moving and they were changing to a warehouse, the intensity would decrease, thereby not requiring change. It's my opinion, and again, you, you don't need to, sh you, don't, you may not agree with me, but it's my opinion that because all of a sudden now we're bringing the public in here, it changes the intensity. It, it, I, like, I would never have agreed to waiting for landscape or lighting or uh, had, I th had I known the public was going to be in here. That to me is the difference. If it's just a construction company, they probably don't care. Now I think it's different, but that's, that's my opinion, and therefore I think a review is
copy of the approved site plan from 2015, and then someone goes out and the field and says, yep, it's all done. And that's what we don't have. I mean, I, I don't know if there's a certificate of occupancy issued. Um, you know, just because it was issued doesn't necessarily mean the building inspector said, hey, you know, what's the deal with this quantum uh, and the overhead power? Yeah. You know, so it wasn't that the sure. planning board allow that? And that would be on the site plan. I don't. I mean, we never discussed compliance after after it was approved. So I don't think the minutes are going to tell anything other than what we talked about. But it says a lot about the quantum. Oh, it does. Yeah. What does it say about the quantum? It says that it's staying and that it's going to be included on the plan. Oh. Which I believe it was. It was. Is it included on the plan? Yeah. So there you go. That answers that. <laughs> and then um, I think another issue that's interesting is. Uh, Somebody asked if they were planning to store any fuel on site, and the answer was no at the time. I think the condition, so, if I'm not mistaken, that was put on there that they, they would apply, they would comply with all applicable state and federal regulations at the time. Yes. Yeah. I think that, that was the condition of approval. Yes, exactly. Any future fuel storage shall conform to all state of Hampshire and town of Rollinsburg regulations. Right. Do you, do you store fuel on there? No, no. There's no fuel storage right now. It's, it's just the vehicle. I think the biggest issue is that we didn't know what would result from the landscape. Right, and right. Clearly, it's Well, we asked for a waiver at that time. So, you know, if, right. if this is a new application, well, but, but, we might have the site currently. But that's why we were concerned. That's right. We didn't think anything had been done. But exactly. For a waiver. Clearly, you didn't have to. You didn't have to. You right. have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It makes more sense for us now, I think. Yeah. And the quantum that was. Yeah. Right. The managers like they were going to keep it. Anything else? No. That's not it. No. Uh, I did mention the HIST waiver and the, um, the other waiver thing. The mm -hmm. landscaping plan. Mm -hmm. Traffic analysis, maybe? Traffic analysis was not, that was not mentioned. Important. Although uh, driveway permit application had been submitted, I don't know. I have a copy of the driveway permit. It's yeah, it's right. Like mine. And then, yeah. uh, was, did your septic design get approved? Septic design is approved and installed. And the, in, in Rollinsford, there's a review process for septics that get submitted to the state, so the town actually has a review of their own, which I have the proof. Well, you have the approval number right there. And I get the, the approval number. That, that was, that's about the extent. Right. So, the only thing that I can tell you that I'm not sure was done, and I don't even know if something in this area specific about the lighting that was requested. Um, lighting was not discussed. It was not discussed. Specifically. Okay. It was discussed generally, but okay. not specifically. But no conditions have been happening. So, there hasn't been any lighting. That's why I, you know, installed. That's why I was wondering whether it was a condition. Um, what, were, what John's comments are is added some lighting, adding some some uh, landscaping. Um, if you want me to present what, what I think we can do to, to do that, or if we want to go through John's comments, that's fine. So why don't we turn we accept the application? Just to ask them. I'll move we accept the application. Thank you, sir. So you have a second? This is, this is for everybody. I will sound Okay. Uh, all, all in favor of accepting the application as complete? Opposed? Okay. We're good. Do you want me to run through my comments quickly? And yeah. Kevin can respond. I yeah. think that would be helpful. So my first comment is, well, it's, it's obviously I only looked at this plan, so I never saw any other, any other supporting documentation. I just, so I just saw the application. There's a waiver in there for something. I don't know what it is, but we'll have to deal with that later. Number two, there's a, a plan note or a plan note that refers to a 20 foot wide public service easement, which is not on the plan, and I don't know where it is, or if it impacts the, anything here. Uh, I, I can show that on the plan. I can tell you that it's uh, it's the line that runs to the Quonset Hut. Okay. That's that's the easy number. That's why I was granted. Okay. That's fine. So I can add that. That needs to be added. Yeah. So I guess in my comment number three, we, we learned that the Kwanzaa Pot was approved by the planning board, so that's fine. Number four, um, it, it, I would assume that you're going to generate some, some waste, uh, scrap metal, oil, and how it's going to be dealt with, whether it's bins inside the building or dumpsters outside. You need to tell us how you're going to deal with that. Yeah. Um, my thought on parking now that the public's going to be here. You know, if you're driving your car up at 5 o'clock at night in December, it's going to be pitch black, and I think that 
around the building in the parking lot. I don't think it needs to go all the way down the driveway, but within the park within the parking area needs, that needs to be lit. Sure. Um, again, I, I mean, now I've sort of changed my opinion. I don't know what happened five years or four years ago, but I do think there could be a little bit of landscaping out here, and I would think it would probably benefit you. Right. Um, and probably at the entrance. Um, I don't think it does much to go back to the building to landscape, but maybe the entrance. Um, this is a tough one for me. Um, the site plan review regulations requires that the driveways and parking areas be paved. I'm not so sure, so concerned about the driveway. I think it would be unreasonable to ask you to pave that. But my next comment is the ADA, right. and I actually looked this up, the ADA specifically says gravel does not comply. Yep. So, and, you know, and, and he, I don't want you to think I'm, you know, uh, heavy here, but if you get sued by someone that says they can't wheel a wheelchair from the ADA space to the building, that's a problem. And I think it's, and I don't think the planning board should be here. So I think the area around the building and including the customer parking ought to be paved. So right. that's, that's currently not paved at all. It's not paved at all. And, and I agree with John. I looked up the ADA regulations. And I'm, yeah. yeah I'm, I mean, I'm not an ADA expert, but no. that was a pretty easy I, answer to find. I totally agree with you. There's a spelling error. Uh, yeah. And that's all I have. Okay. So, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't think, uh, you know, even those uh, a few comments here, I don't think they're that serious. I just think mm -hmm. that there's some, some cleanup needs to be done on the site to make it work for the public. Yeah. Can I address what you Yes, please. Right. So, I've, taken, I've taken this plan basically and highlighted it in red based on John's comments. Okay. First one is a 20 foot easement, public service easement. We're going to add that on there. My biggest concern was if it was, if it was going over the building and yeah. no one ever picked up on it, that could be a problem. Right. And, and they That's specifically fine. call off yeah. those poll numbers. That's so it's, it's sure. very specific. Uh, secondly, the um, uh, this apron around here, which would include the, uh, the ADA handicapped space and one customer space, as well as an apron 25 feet out from the building, extension of the building, what we're proposing is either asphalt or concrete pavers. So the rest of it, we, we have a, I have a waiver request for not paving the remainder of the driveway. Uh, for, as far as lighting goes, what we're proposing is to put a, a light on the front of the building, where the bay, this is where the bays are, by the way, and then an additional light here on this existing pole, which would help cover this area over in here. Most of this is barely even used for more like I don't storage. care about that. That's, I, that's, that's reasonable. That's okay. fine. Yeah. It's more if you park your car. I want you to be able to get in the building safely. Yep, exactly. So. And then and then additionally, what we're proposing is some landscaping along the driveway here and a screening here along this part of the right adjacent to that parking area. And I'm proposing no way spruce just because we can't put arborvitae in the deer just annihilate. So I mean if I think Dana on the last one said else. But it, well, it, was a, it was a type of it was juniper that's right, supposed juniper. to be, it was a, it was a strain of juniper ju ju that ju was supposed to be deer resistant. I'm well, not sure I've had good luck with these no-way screws. I would rather see those. Yeah, and, and, and what, what I propose is to do, they're six to, six to seven feet tall, eight, eight feet on center, to let them grow in. Perfect. Okay, so, so that's how we would like to address those. Now, with regard to the, with regard to the uh, Materials being stored. Um, I currently, yeah, we might even address that. He has a uh, oil storage bin that, when it gets time, somebody comes in and retrieves it. Uh, so the rest of it is stored inside for when it builds up and he brings it to recycling. So there's really no outside storage. They just, they just put a note on the plant. Yeah, just put a note on the plant. And, and, and then, you know, if there's a dumpster for scrap metal, just show it on the plant. Yeah. So we don't have to get a call. Or, you know, what is this? Good or right. bad? Right. You know, I, I would assume you generate a fair amount of scrap metal, and if, if you're going to put it in a dumpster, just, I think there's, I don't care, but I think it should be shown by. Yep. Just so we don't I see. Totally agree. Yep. Yeah. And then, and then, moving forward with compliance, I don't know how are you going to address that later on when you're talking about other stuff too, or is there somebody that does a compliance check on this? I guess is a, a fair question for the board in general. I think that might be a good for well, you. Well, it appears. I mean, it would appear that you've complied with your with your 15 approval, so yeah, we don't have any indication of the app. I just mean moving forward that, you know, 
at a later date, if somebody is someone going to come up for compliance, that we've added the landscaping and the lighting. Oh, I think yeah, I think yeah, Tom Clark, the building Tom Clark. Okay. Yeah. So we'll ask. We'll, we'll take the approved site plans and say, you know, he, you're ready. To, you know, you're, you can open up now and, and do what okay. you want to do. And I, we we reached out to Tom several times. I know well, he's, I think he's, he's, he's right. very busy, but. We reached out to him about the ADA requirement for the parking, and we did not hear back from him. So that's why I went and researched myself to find out what you did. So that's yeah. why we're trying this week by any chance. I have okay. on vacation. Oh, is he? No. Oh, we might have tried this. That's, 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 that's by one. So he's so, usually pretty good. Okay. So, anyways, we, we just researched it and found what you found that you know gravel is not acceptable for the ADA. So that's why we're proposing this. So, if if and again, I, I I want you to be protected too. No, I, I listen. We're on board. Okay. All right. No doubt about that. Yeah. Yeah. And the landscaping is fine. The lighting is fine. So, I mean, Dan just wants to be able to move forward. And he has some state. You know, sometimes they provide for compliance checks, and he wants to be, you know, uh, in compliance with with the state inspectors. So, the board sees fit that we could have some conditions of approval, as what I described, from what. John has here, and then I can submit the plans to John for his review, make sure that those were compliance before we get a signature of the miles. Okay. And again, this doesn't get recorded because it's a site plan. Right. You currently have commercial vehicles. Only commercial vehicles. Excuse me? You're, only, you're currently only doing commercial vehicles, right? And now I've been doing That's some residential. residential. That's a vehicle. Passenger. Passenger. Okay. Um, I just have some concerns um, regarding when I, when I see vehicle storage area around a service station, I become concerned about one vehicle becomes 27 vehicles. And there's no limitations on that. That causes me concern. Further, when I think of vehicles going to repair, um, what triggers in my mind is a vehicle in need of repair often leaks items and we're, we're these vehicles are traversing this gravel area, and while they wait to be repaired or not, you still have a vehicle that may not be parked on any sort of a gravel, sur on any sort of a paved service surface um, that may or may not be leaking into gravel. Um, I'm not saying they all do it, I'm not saying they all don't, but just when I see vehicle storage, vehicles in need of repair sitting on gravel with no other limitations. Um, that does cause me some concerns to, to give an approval to a project like this where we have you know, number plans and other things in proximity. Um, that's a concern that I, I would like to see um, some limitations and some very you know, stringent guidelines to have to follow. Example being, you may have five cars, um, no vehicle may sit more than you know, X days. Understandably, there is a policing issue, you know, and of course, um, you know, the, the, the town's resources are stretched quite thin, but um, without that limitation in place, then there can be no further follow-up should that one vehicle become three vehicles, become six vehicles that sit through the winter. Sure. Um, I would just well, be fearful of getting approval if, well, if we have the lanes we, we use for Paul's and San Auto, but it was, I don't, I think no unregistered vehicles. But he was also parking over Pavement. No, that, I, I that was, was talking about, I, I, about, right, I'm talking about the, the, the duration of cars. Yeah, yeah, we, don't want, we don't want 10 junk cars sitting there and just right. sort of stealing parts. I don't really want any junk cars sitting on, on, on gravel. And I know Paul's, Paul's pavement is questionable in several places. And I know at, at his expense, he did pay. Yep. Um, and I'm sure that was a great expense, but uh, that was at our request. So I would be very fairful of approving another repair shop that is not held to the same standards that we held Paul to. Granted, he's higher, more visible. Sure. But in the interest of fairness and also in the interest of protecting our community, I, I just worry about vehicles need to repair so they can if, Kevin, if you look to the left of the building where the bays are, so when you pull in the bays are the front of the building? Yes. So if you look to the left, if I don't have a scale with me, but it looks like there's room for at least two vehicles, maybe double sack, you know, next two next to the building and then maybe two, two in front of them. That's right. That's about I wonder if we could identify that area it is. But that, on his plan where he's looking at adding either, either asphalt or concrete to that side of the building, 
That's what I'm that's talking, talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Right, right that's, there. But I think right, that's not shown as him oh, changing right, the right, surface. Right, right, He's right. only the face of the building and to the left. But once again, not the side of the left, just barely. Um, but then we want to we want to force you to do pavement, not 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 pavement, not pavement. Because yeah. Kevin's concern is yeah. Oh, I understand. Liquids weeping through. Yeah. But that's not my only concern. My only concern is limitations on the number of vehicles that can sit. But yeah. if we if we were to so if we were to pave, I don't want to design this, but if we were to pave the area to the left of the building, so extend that apron extend over, over, you could probably put I would say easily four vehicles in there. Yeah, it's probably more like six of them. So. Does that make sense, Kevin? I'm sorry. Pave to the side. Can you show them? I, I I would have not have a problem if every vehicle that was allowed to park there was on pavement. Correct. But I would like to have a finite number of how many vehicles. Well, you're a one-man band. Are going to sit there? Um, so, and, and nothing against you at all, Mr. Mm -hmm. Pepin, at all. I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud here that you could pave that too, and you could put four cars there. But when four cars become six, and it's not your fault if a customer can't afford to pay, the car sits there. They're, 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 you can call them all day what you want. They're, you know, you can't just send it to the junkyard. They're not. They don't have two hundred dollars to have it towed somewhere else, so the vehicle sits. And you can't do really anything about it because it's not your vehicle. I know you go to the state and you claim it. You know, yeah. I, I know that process takes some time. But nonetheless, we have a disabled vehicle that we've allowed because the numbers grew to sit on the common. I mean, I sit on ground. So if we were to extend that over to uh, extend this over here and make that pavement and limit it to six vehicles max? If, 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 if there was pavement for six vehicles and you were allowed to have six vehicles yeah. sit, Providing that they didn't sit for X number of days, weeks, whatever. Sure. That I wouldn't have a problem with that, but unless it was spelled out that specifically, right. number of vehicles, you know, uh, paved parking for all, yeah. and none to sit more than so many days. Because that's sort of a standard we held other businesses too. That um, just speaking a lot, I, I I wouldn't feel confident at all approving a project that didn't have those limitations. So could we come up with some language that uh, you can come to whatever John review uh, and time and uh, something very similar? I have nothing against the project. Yeah. That's yeah. just my so I guess So I guess what we want you to do is sort of dimension that off so we can stack six vehicles in there, or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. So if, you, if you want to limit, limit it to four vehicles, that's fine. And then <clears throat> we, need, we need language to be put on the plan. And I, I can't know what we limit the to, but I, I, you know, I would say like four, no vehicle can sit there more than 45 days. I think I'd probably 30 days isn't enough. Yeah. It's a major project. Maybe we can use the same language we used on that. Right. Then, Paul, then I don't know who did the calls. So I wasn't here the day it got approved. Um, I wasn't here the day it was approved. Oh, no. So we don't have those. <laughs> uh, we have a process now where we actually <laughs> file these things, but prior to. Yeah, I don't know who did it. How long ago was that? Uh, it was January 2016. It was an engineering firm I had. It wasn't like the top three we usually deal with. Where, where are they? Where's that? Where is that? Where is that? Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I wasn't here. I wasn't here then. Um, oh, I, 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 I don't remember. Uh, but it was conditions of the, I mean, it was, it, it was it John listed on the actual plan as far as the limitations he yes. had for vehicles? We yes. talked about it at length. I'm mm. pretty sure we did. I'm well, sure we talked about how long, long for made him on the final, you know, it was, was it was Jeff Oliva. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Was it really? Yeah. I don't remember that. Well, then call it Jeff. I'd be glad to call Jeff. Get it, I get a get a copy of the site. Yeah, we'll put no the we'll dimensions on here, the number of vehicles, and then we'll get the line and how long we can stay. That makes sense. I, 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 that would satisfy me. Okay. okay. I think that's fair. Okay. You know, because we hammered that out for quite a while. Thank you for that. Any other questions, comments from the board before we open up the board? Very next week. You mind if I we, since we will need some waivers, one being, well, I'll let you read. I've actually listed out um, four waivers here because I went through the site review regulations pretty uh, thoroughly. Okay. Now, just once you get them all, you go down to sure. Well, I don't know about high intensity. You already got that. Okay, maybe we can drop that on. So the. Uh, and the first one is uh, Article 3, Section 1F, 
the site plan shows, uh, well, what, what they're requiring in that section is that you show the structures on the bunny parcels within 200 feet of the, of the lot. And we show dimensions to these the, the budding buildings, but we don't show the buildings because the scale of the, of the plan wouldn't allow, allow us to do that unless we added multiple sheets to get there. But isn't there a recently constructed house in that right. same area? Yeah, there's a recently constructed house where there was a house before that. Oh, that one? Well, yes. I don't even think construction's complete. No, we can show that. We can show that. Yes. So I guess this is a waiver for the ones that are not directly in front of that lot. If that makes sense. So the high intensity soil sounds like John thinks that we don't oh, yeah. need that. Nothing's happening. So right. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it is. Yeah. Traffic impact analysis was the other one. I think we have a DOT permit already, so I can submit a copy of that DOT permit. But I think we probably should get a waiver on that to be technical about yeah. John. Yeah. Okay. And then the parking lot design, what we're asking here is uh, the apron that we talked about. Um, and I'll, I'll uh, if you want to amend this to say at the garage bay entrance uh, and westerly of the, of the ADA parking spaces and westerly, is that westerly? Yeah. Uh, east of the east. east of <laughs> Easterly of the building to include the, the car storage unit. Well, I was just say except as denoted on the plan. Okay. Because you're going you're to modify the plan anyway. Right. So I would just throw those out there as. as so there are three waivers that we're asking for. Or, uh, yeah. Okay. Talk about those. So why don't we open up uh, the public hearing to accept any comments, questions from the public. Yes, sir. Uh, Mark Kutcher, 204 Summersworth Road. I, I don't have any problems with this as long as it uh, meets all the approvals and the, uh, let's say, uh, accepted use in that, in that zone. And, it's all been checked out, so it's fine. Thank you for that. Is it okay to ask someone who's asking a question? Sure. Mark, did you did you get a chance to come to the hearing when the first time around when this happened? Yes, I did. So, did you have any concerns then about landscaping or? No. The no? only thing I I had a concern with was that he, you know, the only thing I'm worried about is any uh, site work that might affect the water going sure. on, on, on to your property. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Right. That was it. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Okay, why don't we suspend the, the public hearing at this point. Um, so any other comments, questions from the board before we address uh, the waivers? I, I think what I'd like to do, um, I, I, I know that Kevin and Dan probably want a conditional approval tonight, but I really think that we need to see the parking lot. Have Kevin draw the, draw the parking and pavement out. It's a big concern of Kevin's. I think it's a big concern of everybody's. And see the, see the notes that were put on uh, Paul's Integrity Auto and, and make sure that they... I think that's fair. Rather, Kevin, than, rather than forcing a conditional approval. That's fine. I, I, I want to see how they talk I don't think the size I think it's of Paul's building versus the size of your building versus the number of bays. I, I think I, I do want to see that information again. Because um, we can look at the number of employees and things like that, yep. like the size of his building and what he expected for traffic and right. how many cars he expected to be repairing or waiting for repair. So um, at this point, without that verbiage in front of me, I don't think I'd be comfortable acting on that specific waiver, but I could act on other ones if you need that to And, and uh, uh, as long as there's no like uh, interruption in, in Dan's business, I don't think there's an issue if he wants to back to the are, are you anticipating uh, uh, bringing in additional staff? Or? No. No. Okay. Someone else? Yes. It's probably a good idea to get the owner of record on board with a letter um, uh, with the final plans. Okay. That, I'm not sure if that was submitted with the application. We have signed it. Uh, uh, and, I, and I have an authorization letter to represent him. This is David. 
did talk to a bunch of towns. Uh, Stratford is pretty, not lax, but their percentage of, of success in recording plans is pretty high. So I don't know how long it takes to get from this office to the registry and back. But and time that's, spent there. And time spent there. I mean, you know, um, I, I, I did talk to uh, the most of the I said do it. Talk to said it was about a 10 or 15 minute ordeal there. So travel time plus you know, 15 minutes from here, maybe. So um, it's actually it's 20 minutes because I live I live just around the corner of minutes. the registry. Yeah. So 20. So I mean it's. An hour, an hour, hour, fifteen or so. I don't know. You know, so we, I guess the selectmen need to decide what that fee is. Is it fifty bucks? Is it thirty? You know, and, and then you brought up a good point. They record two. They're going twice, but then that gets sort of you know like how you split it. <laughs> and we don't know that's going to. I mean, I don't know. I would say the fee is fifty bucks right. or whatever it is. Whatever the fee is to cover your time plus the L chip plus the recording. It shouldn't be an agreement. Say is just put language in the this is a one that this fee covers one trip. I mean, if for any reason the plan can't be recorded, that the, the, the addition, additional fees will apply. Okay. This, but I think it should be spelled out as that same fee. Should the same thing, right? That same fee. It's well, it wouldn't be the L chip, it wouldn't be the recording, it would be the administrative fee. Yeah, yeah, whatever that portion whatever is, that is, that is, is yes, yes. the same reason. I don't know what you pay your staff, so I can't, I can't tell you. I, I, I think it's reasonable, yes. Less than 50 per hour. I, I don't think, I personally, I don't think you're going to do it on the yeah. By the time you go down the stairs, go down to your car, yeah, drive to the park, get in, you, I, I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to take. Listen, if it's $50, I'll do it. It's like on my way home.
then you have to give back the fetus. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, another step. So it might be easier to do just to put it like a an asterisk saying that recording fees will be charged at, uh, time. Well, at the time of the posting. Yeah. Just unless it's accounting. Right. Right. Yep. I mean, I've never seen it. Unless it's an offset, but potential yeah. charges. If they get through an insurance plan, they're going to be more than happy to pay $50 to get it done. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I think that's what we've talked about before. And we know they'll have to get filed. So that's right. Yep. So this is all in the select board to approve the dough. Yeah. And the tax collector who was doing it previously has agreed to do it again. Okay. Wonderful. Um, and then there was just a Process. Yeah, I guess we wanted to sort of, Caroline and I have been talking about it as a sort of an ongoing thing, like, um, so when an application comes in, who needs to get it, how many copies do you need, where does it need to be sent to for review? Um, Electronic is required or not, how many big copies, how many small copies. And, um, you know, just... Which should be all spelled out, right, so there's a checklist you need. Yes. Well, they, they, so, so many plans are required, and I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but that's spelled out. But the, with the, where the snag, where the breakdown is, and I don't know why, but it broke down horribly this week because all three of these guys were experienced. Usually, and I don't know how they do it, but they always call me and say, "Yeah, I've got application, an application to in. Can you swing my office and I drop off of the plan?" That typically happens. It's harder when you have like a Cumberland Farms with a Manchester uh, engineering firm because they don't may, may not know who I am. Right. Um, but I do think if the process is, you know, whether I'm here or somebody else is here, somehow I, the person sitting in my chair needs to get those plans well in advance. And it's not just the plans. It's I really want everything. And I want paper copies. I want the big, full-size plan. Electronic copies don't really do much. So, you know, whether, uh, maybe we should spell out that a separate package is mailed to you is and mailed they to mail me. it. So and, don't have to deal and then in terms of the, and Pat Macklin had a had a, uh, a different I don't know what Miles' opinion is what this board's opinion is but Pat was pretty strongly opposed to me recommending a plan uh, uh, an apple an application be sent to the, the engineer for review he always wanted to make that call sometimes people are like I know it's going to be reviewed yeah. by the engineer I'd like to save some time and just sort of compress the review period I want I, I'm happy to send it over there I'm willing, willing to pay the fees. You know, um, I don't know how you guys want to handle that. You know, I personally, I think, why would you want to waste? Why would you come here, get together, and just say, okay, listen? Right. Then we need to wait a review. meeting. If they're willing to pay the fee and they want to, and they're, and they're agreeable, I would just send it there. You, I suppose, there's, there may be a case where I say it should be reviewed by the town engineer. You say, geez, it really shouldn't have been. Right. But I guess it happened right now. It yeah. doesn't. If you think it's going to work, I think we're going to be one. Who are receptive to hear your opinion. And I like the idea of by X day even that you should have receipt plans, you know, hard cover. So hard cover in, that, you know, in that case, uh, if I were to make the call, I would just say, hey, this plan is, you know, it's complicated enough or it involves enough moving pieces that I think we ought to send to, to the engineer and we would I think I would tell them, get another set over to and, and they can deliver it directly to, to J Stephen. I, I prefer on the professional that we hire make a call. Right. Not completely. Three miles. No, no, no. We're sitting in the chair. And I, and I don't think, I, don't, I hope I'm not mischaracterizing how Pat, what Pat's opinion was, but I'm pretty sure that he was, he always sort of wanted to weigh in on that before I did, just, you know, made the call. So, but, um, so if that's how the process is going to work, I, I get directed to that. And then maybe the time I say it, I don't think it's necessary. You all look at it. But that's, then we haven't lost it. So, would you just directly address the applicant and tell them to send the plans yep. for review? Yep. Yeah, you wouldn't send it back well, that's to what us. Well, that's what I did with Dana. Okay. I did it here in a public, in a public okay. meeting. At our last meeting, if you recall, I said, yep. you ought to get me some J. Okay. And we also did not have our heads. But it, it happened to be that Dana came in for a free application meeting, and, and he rolled out the plans, and I said, get over to J for him. Yeah. Meeting. Well, I just don't want to have to be responsible for, like, you telling me, me telling No, it would be easier if I just tell okay, the applicant. Perfect. You know, yes. get them over there for the review. And, okay. Yep. Um, I also think that any reviews that come out should definitely be CC'd to Caroline and I so that we have it for like I didn't I didn't get a I didn't get Jay's review of the 
CJ. Well, and I wasn't sure whether or not it was appropriate for them. Yeah, Caroline asked, you know, and Caroline asked me, could you, should, should they forward it to the outcome? And I said, yes. Um, I mean, they paid for it, so they should yeah. see it. And plus, it's sort of, why blindside them and say, you know, here, here you go. I agree. I just, so, I'm yeah, not a no, decision I, maker, so I agree. Right, right. No, I think that was a, it was a good question. And I, I think as soon as it comes, I mean, most municipal engineers would just automatically copy it to the applicant. I don't know why Jay doesn't do that, but. If you get it, just send it right out of the applicant, and I send it to the board. So. Well, I think most applications, most applicants, when they're starting this process, timeliness is a factor, and anything that they can do to keep it moving along and you get a heads up on on, on a report or to send to the, to a board review, I think yeah. that uh, they'd be receptive to I that. I think I think Jay's hesitation was sending it to directly to the applicant. Um, for example, with this with C and J not being sure about our storm water regulations. He wants to be honest in his review, but he's not. He doesn't want to throw the town under the bus publicly necessarily about are our regulations up to date? Do they include the latest storm water regulations that are ordered by the state? Do we have a deficiency in announcing that out loud? That kind of thing, so that it's more. You know, I think his intention is perhaps more of an internal document for us to review. You know, and then and then yep. maybe factor into your review that you sent. I, I don't know. For if, me, I'm just I, I would you know I, I'm happy. I, I've known Jay a long time. I think he does a good job. I think he's thorough. I, I think he's honest. I would just send it right to the applicant. I would have no. And I think if he that. had, if Jay had the understanding that he knew this was going to the applicant, maybe his verbiage might be a little bit different. If he was sensitive, and so maybe that's sensitive the thing. To our deficiencies, maybe right? maybe you ought to make that clear to him yeah, then okay. that they're that's just going to go so that he knows yeah, that. That's fine. And anyway, there's been times when Jay says something and this board says, eh, you know. I mean, with the bullet mill, he brought up some points that we just couldn't resolve. And right. we, we, it, it wasn't we, we didn't listen to him, we just... We, we took it under advisement. Right. So, and that doesn't yeah. happen. Forward. So, yep, I think that's the process to follow. Um, I also think we need to sort of discuss, like, how many plans that people should be submitting because we are drowning in paper yeah. there. And it's hard to and tell what is... about the dropping of the drowning in too, but that's in there. Um, so it's almost like so when an applicant drops off an application, I don't need nine of these. Nope. I don't need nine of these at this meeting because this isn't the final plan usually anyway. Right. So um, can we say, you know, they the regulations say one thing. It says that I mean it basically asks that a copy for every member of the board be given when you give your application. But the reality is that that's way too many copies and unnecessary. We don't look at them until the night Right. You don't send packets to the members in advance, do you? No. Okay. Then, then I would say four. You know, I, I don't know how many is enough. I would say four. I mean, I want a full size set. Yeah. But they can send them to me directly. So that, yeah. let's, say, let's say that's an extra one. I think four cents is more than enough. I want to make sure everyone has a chance to see it, right? Like so, yeah. So like, we, they have to be at the town office. Yeah, anyway, we have to have a public hearing. They have to be publicly available, so okay. they're here. But I mean, nine is small copies. But nine is ridiculous. Yeah. I, I mean, would, 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 would you as board members sure. like it if? I mean, applicants are responsible for sending a digital copy, and usually you have to chase after them to do it. But if we sent a digital copy and you forwarded a digital oh, copy that would, before the meeting? That would work is that for me. Something yeah. that I would, here's what I'll tell you about a digital copy. They're horrible. Yeah. Even, even, even with a massive screen, you know, like, like the, they're just, they're so busy. They're very, very hard yeah. to look at, unless you're used to it, you know. Um, I think most people are going to pull those up and just get a headache. Um, it's fine to forward them if for the board, for the members that can use them. What about like a forwarding a copy of the application just so they have a general uh, idea of what's coming before them? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, think, uh, I think that gives us a chance to review it as a, as a project as a whole. We know in the back of our mind that you are going to scrutinize it. That's what we count on. That's what we, we appreciate. We, you know, we know that's going to happen. So. I, you know, I don't look at the type of trees that are on there, but I'd like to see the layout, how, how, Maybe how it would be helpful to in. send an electronic copy to the board members that they can either choose to look at it or not. Yeah. And if they have questions, that might say, then they come down here to the town hall and look at the paper points. Is that fair? Yeah. You know? Well, I, I hate to send, in 11, my fear, you know, I, I happen to send the zoning board in my town, I, and we will not take 11 by 17. Uh, you know, they're so small, you can't breathe. Yeah. So, so I either want a full-size plan or I don't want anything. Um, 
So I wouldn't waste your time with the left hand. Except you. I think they're a waste. 25. Unless it's an easy, simple plan. Okay. But unless, I mean, unless other people think otherwise. But I find. Do so you think they should only submit the application and, and full size? Uh, well, I, if the, the board members, I mean, you guys, if you can read those, I. <laughs> I mean, the older I get, the harder it is. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't I read any of this right now. I mean, they're fine for reference to say, "Oh yeah, yeah I, I see that," honest. but they're hard to read. I don't need glasses. <laughs> well, you might want to reconsider that position. <laughs> so, do you think? Do you think that um, applicants should should not even bring these to meetings? Oh, they can bring them to meetings. I think they're good for the yeah. pass around. You know, it's what I find. I see oftentimes the boards I work for is. You'll see a couple big size plans on the round table, and then everybody will have the 11 by 17s. And that way they can say, oh, well, you know, I can't really read this, but yeah. I can see that. So I think they're helpful for the board, but I wouldn't wish, you know, uh, so maybe one, one 11 by 17 for each board member, and then four paper copies, that's probably fine. Okay. Yeah. What do you think about asking applicants to recycle their paper? Well, I this is New Hampshire. We have a lot of trees in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the problem is you're going to ask them to do it. They're going to walk out and throw them in the bin. So I don't, yeah. Just, yeah, they're not going to just leave the recycling bin right here. We control it and we have recycling, yeah. so I'm not worried about yeah. recycling. I know, Faye. Can you please say that? Can you please say that? Yeah. Can you please say that? Yeah. Can you please So I'm sorry to insert this, but I was hoping we could spend three minutes talking about the maintenance of the plants. I would like the idea. Um, the Select Board and Planning Board have both been um, blindsided by the lack of history where there is history to be had. Um, and that's because planning files, we all know, are a mess, and so are zoning files. Um, and that is because they were historically filed by year and by name, which is a way you cannot find them. And the, so sub subsequently, um, a, a half dozen good-natured people volunteer to try to organize that and get it into a map and lot format. Um, but they get um, partially into that and then overwhelmed. And so um, now we have complete destruction in the planning office of the planning files. We also have too many copies of the plans and we have um, unofficial plans. So we have a mess. And so what I, um, Miles and I have um, talked about um, digitizing plans, but that's expensive and it doesn't look like it's going to happen. And so what I wanted to talk to this board about, which would need select board approval as well, ultimately, but um, incorporating planning um, files with zoning and, and building permits and everything else into the assessing files by map and lot, color-coded, so that planning and zoning files have a certain consistent color within a map and lot, so they're spotable, findable, and we can find all the history to a given property. So. I, I just want to know if there are any comments or concerns about that before I ask the select board about that. It is going to mean ultimately um, taking over all the file cabinets in my office, likely. And so there will, need, there will be a need for a, an additional file cabinet, I would suggest, in the select board office, but would conversely open up a lot of room in the FAR office. So currently you have the assessment. I do. And it's by Matt Matt Matt. Imagine that, yeah. Um, so you, should be. You, yes. you, you're proposing, so if someone comes in, this is for whatever lot, you put it with their assessment information. It's color-coded, yes. I think that sounds. The one thing I would say is I think that the, if you're going to put a zone, let's just say you're going to have, basically you're going to have a property problem. Yes. You're going to have, you're going to have assessing, uh, perhaps building permits, maybe a zoning section for a, 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 a lot that has that, and then planning. The only thing I would suggest is that if it's a hanging folder, have individual folders for each of those four categories. So if yes. John Q. Public walks in and says, can I see the zoning file, you don't have to give them the whole file. Right, that's you the plan. I mean? Hanging files, really, for each property, and then all the planning folders within With it design. are red, yes. and then yep. all the building that, permits I think are green. That's great. Yep. And, you know. yep, I think that's great. Isn't, this something, is isn't this something we have to do, though? Because, I mean, as, as the record keeping is right now, there's going to be an issue that comes up that there something is so we have yeah, to be able to Let me give you an example. If you'd like one, a quick one. Yeah, I, I mean, the neighbors at uh, Falls Integrity are upset because they believe there's too many cars parked over there at any given time um, in different stages of repair or disrepair. We don't have a copy of, of the plan. We just had to ask Kevin McNamee to go hunting down a copy, and I hope he finds it so we can finally. 
finally find out what the actual site conditions were so I can hold them accountable. I can't send the code enforcement officer and tell them, you're only supposed to have X amount of cars, and I can't, I don't know exactly what well, the number is. Yeah. So you you can't go by it, the best I remember. Yeah. It was through this reorg you know, attempted reorganization okay. process that was never figured out, okay. that was never okay. finished, okay. that just left but Unless you're paying someone. I mean, that's when things get done. If someone is being paid to perform the task, granted that costs money, it's a lot to ask for anyone to volunteer their time. And what's even worse is to begin a project and then leave it. Just how far into it did you leave it? You know, the next right. guy's picking up the skirt. Yes. Well, but I'm not sure we should have volunteers dealing with the town. Records, right? But like, yet, we don't have a lot of paid resources, so everybody's right. answer is always find a volunteer, and of course, people raise their hand and say, of course I'll do it. So that's why I would like to do this, and that way my office can control it, and we can do this with all the files going forward, and 10 minutes here and 10 minutes there, we can incorporate history. Is there a sensitivity issue where this is generally public record? I mean, we're not talking to Well, if someone, if someone comes in, I mean, just tonight, um, we have this thing, we don't know what happened. I mean, I, we, we don't, don't have a copy of the approved site plan. We're sitting here looking at Kevin go through his folder. It's a little, it's, we should, you know, if you went over to Madbury and said, hey, well, how, can I see the Pepin um, you know, site plan that was approved in, you know, in 15? It would be two minutes. I'd walk right in, grab the file, bring it up. You'd, have, you'd probably have minutes attached to it, you know, and the, and the approval. Um, everything right there. Madbury, but none of this paperwork is, there's no problem with it. Group of volunteers seeing any of this information. No, it's not. Oh, no, no. no. But, 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 I'm, I'm a, but I'm a but taking you know, this and shredding it. I had talked about that for years, having a pizza party. It, it's, it's never going to work. I, mean, I think what Kelly is saying is if she has 20 minutes, she can go grab six or seven, whatever, bundles of junk out of the planning office, and she, she, can, she, she can figure out what map and what. What's the model of the project? It needs to be project. done by but a staff. Start it and not finish it. Is, is one of the worst things. Well, the first part of it's going to be figuring out where it was left at by the next right. previous yeah. pizza party. You know, I mean, just <laughs> and one pizza party isn't going to do it. You know, no, if we did that. You know. Know. Where, where, so where are you proposing to keep this, yeah. this size thing? So, so um, we do have still flat file drawers. So. If it can, all right. I, well, is that the one for tonight? So there, yeah. there are two. I, I, unfortunately, I didn't recycle it, but I threw it away in that garbage can, and I had it folded to about that. Thing. So, so there's no, you can fold 10 sheets easily. You can. You yeah. can, and if yep. it's more than that, you can rip that in half, like undo the staples into yep. halves and fold it into parts. I don't want to close um, the If it's, you know, bed probably and beyond, beyond and it's really an inch and a half thick, then it could be in the there's, flat file. I mean, that, 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 that fits in the... Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, thank you. That, I mean, that's, <laughs> and that's a pretty thick plan set for us, so... It's an orange that, that, you know, and if it was 20 sheets, just cut it, you know, just pull it, just pull it apart. Yeah, pull it apart. Pull it apart. But I would not use a flat file, because you're never going to go. You know, I want to save the flat files for the subdivisions of streets, sure. so that, like, for That's town markets and, yeah. you know, those things. It's a much bigger scale. Yeah. Is there any concern with you spending your time on planning board activities? Like, I don't know how it works for um, To be budgetary. clear, this is going to be, like, you know, 10 minutes a week to oh, infinity okay. at, at this, you know, particularly with our current situation. But, you know, the plan is to start here and move forward with new plans okay. in this way, and then... You know, under direct volunteer supervision, I can, you know, control it and have a plan for how to integrate. Do you, board would have to do you yes. still want, like, zoning cases and planning board cases to be uh, compiled in those meetings? I think folders. everything ought to be integrated, and in, yes, into folders. Well, we can talk about that. The colored files, I'm not sure if we need folders, the colored, colored files. Well, see, the only thing is, like, those in the folders, so you have, like, all of your receipts. For yeah, it's probably a good that. idea so they don't fall around. Yeah. Yeah. But, but as Mike said, you know, I just, I just wanted to get the conceptual uh, approval and concerns addressed. Yeah, I, I think it sounds great. It's tough, and I agree with the starting point. From this point forward, this is where we'll do it. And then it should be at the back. Yeah. yeah. You know, but it's a lot of ask for you as well. We didn't have assessing files at all before I started. <laughs>
I got that one done. It took 10 minutes a week for, <laughs> for a while. For a long time, but we got a session done. Mm -hmm. So, did we hammer up the application process? Yeah, I think so. The only other thing I wanted to bring up, and, I brought, and it was a weird thing with this application, we had three experienced applicants, or three experienced engineers, so I, all three of them screwed up the notice. Well, I don't know if Damon did. I guess he did get it. He, he did. I, I called that. Yeah, I yeah. caught it. So, you know, that's something to point I don't. And again, I don't think you should have to go through the plans and say, these people need to be noticed. But you should, someone should say, are the people that prepared these plans and that have certified these plans or have their certification on these plans, are they, have they been notified? And the reason it's important is, just so everybody knows, uh, Mark West uh, is a wetland scientist on one of these projects. I can't remember which one. I think it was on CJ. Yeah, CJ. So he doesn't work for Dana. So he would he might not know what this means. And, and that's why it's it's required. Um, with, yeah. with Jeff Oliva and, and the surveyor in his office, it's not so important because Jeff's here. The surveyor works for him or works with him. So, but it's still it's a law. I mean, it's it's a statute. No, I know. That's, so it has that's, to happen. That's the one that I. And you don't want anybody to say I that the, the notice was flawed. So I don't know how three of these got. Like I said it to Jeff. What, what happened? I don't know. I guess I forgot. Them. We do this all the time, you know. But interesting. So I think it's the people in their office who are doing it or not. I don't know. Yes, they are not the ones that they have the notices. Right. Cheryl, who was here for Pepin yeah, the first yeah. time, it was because she typically does the notices. Okay. It's it's always an, an admin. It's not typically. Well, it was weird that three uh, again. It was three. You know, it wasn't like three homeowners. It was three. Well, and still, it's their job. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Um, so one last uh, item. Uh, I'm not sure if you'll know that Patrick. Are you still uh, setting still? Oh. To, to Charleston. Charleston's after um, he'll be absent for the next three months uh, from September. You don't even tap. Right. You're not commuting. Uh, well, you'll know after the three months. Hopefully before the work. Okay. Um, so I don't know, like, I, it didn't strike me that we needed him to resign from the board, given he's still a resident of the town and we'll just have a yeah, long term. And he's a long term. So. Let's do that. Yeah. Yeah, good luck. The town will back. So with that, is there any other business um, to discuss? Uh, to adjourn. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.